Okay, so again in this chapter we've been talking a lot about exponents, so we're going to continue with that today. Uh, today we're going to look at what happens when you have a negative exponent. That's this box is referring to, negative exponent theorem. It says for any positive base, remember we call the number sitting on the ground or variable on the ground, we call that the base, and real exponent n or any non-real non-zero base b, an integer exponent n, b to the negative nth power, here's what's important from this box, b to the negative nth power is always going to be the same as, whoops, 1 over b to the nth power. In other words, if you think of this as being over 1, if we ever have b to the negative nth power to make it a positive exponent, we put it in the denominator. We never leave a numerator blank so we put something up there to hold that position, so we put a 1 up there. In other words, if I have 2 to the negative fifth power, we're going to write that as a decimal. Well, for 1, if we, w if we were asked first to write that as a fraction, that actually would be our first step. We're going to put it in the denominator, so it's going to be 1 over 2 to the fifth power. Now, 2 to the fifth power is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 1 over 32. And then 1 over 32, if you did that as a decimal, would be 0 0.03125. But the key is to know, even though they didn't ask us specifically, the key is to know how to write that as a fraction. So 4 to the negative thirds as a fraction would be 1 over 4 cubed. And 4 cubed is the same as 4 times 4 times 4, which is the same as 1 over 64. And 1 divided by 64, if we did that on a calculator, it would be 0 0.015625. Now you might be saying, well, can't we just type this in our calculators and get, can I just type in 4 to the negative third on my calculator and get my answer? Yes, you could, but remember on the test, chances are there's going to be a section where you're going to have to do this without a calculator. Now, I would not ask you to find the decimal without a calculator. I would simply ask you to write this as a fraction or write it without a negative exponent. Look at this next example. Critical buckling load is a minimum weight that could cause a column to buckle. Rewrite Euler's formula for critical bu buckling road, load, which is P equals pi times E times, that's an I, by the way, divided by L squared, using negative exponents and no fractions. Now, in the parentheses here, they're just describing what each of these variables represent, where E is a constant related to the material used to construct the column. I is a moment of inertia of a cross-section of the column. And L is the length of the column. Now, those might not mean anything to you, um, but that's OK. All they're asking us to do here is to rewrite it using negative exponents. So in other words, we don't want to have this as a fraction. So this L squared that's down here, we're going to move that up to the denominator, which we can do. It's kind of the reverse of what we have here. Here I'm saying that, now I'm saying that if I have a fraction, I want to write it without a fraction. I'm going to move whatever's in the denominator up to the numerator, but I have to make the exponent negative. So this would be the same as p equals pi squared times e times i times l to the negative second power. So anytime you move something, it's either going to become positive or, exp or negative, depending on what it was previously. So if it was a positive exponent, like here I had L squared, and move it to the numerator, so it becomes a negative exponent. In the previous examples, we had negative exponents, we move it to the denominator, making it a positive exponent. Why don't you guys give this one a try? It says rewrite Newton's law of universal gravitation using negative exponents and no fractions. So why don't you guys take a second and do that? should have gotten is f of g equals g times m sub 1 times m sub 2 times r to the negative second power be your answer. Okay, let's look at some other things. Now, though, notice here it says all the properties and theorems involving powers stated in uh, lesson 7.2 is what that's supposed to say, 7-2. Um, Right like this. So those same properties are true for this one. 
when the exponents are negative integers. So for example, it says rewrite each expression as a single power or a single number in scientific notation. So here we have r to the fifth divided by r to the twelfth. Well, remember in the previous lesson we said that if the bases are the same, we subtract the exponents. Well, when I do that, 5 minus 12 gives me negative 7, so it would be r to the negative 7th power. Or right here, I'm multiplying and the bases are the same, so what do we do with the exponents? Do you remember? We add them. So we're going to take 4 to the negative 3 plus 5. Well, negative 3 plus 5 is 2, so it would be 4 squared which if they ask me to simplify, I know 4 squared would be 16. The next one, remember whenever I have a number or an exponent outside the parentheses, we distribute it to everything inside the parentheses. So this will be the same as 2 squared times 10 to the, we would multiply these together, 3 times 2 is 6 times 1.5 times 10 to the negative second. So here's what I would do. I would take 2 squared is 4. I'd multiply those together. 4 times 1.5 because those don't have exponents. So we just multiply those normally. 4 times 1.5 is 6. Now the 10 to the 6 and the 10 to the negative second, they have the same bases, so we would add those exponents. So for that one, I'd end up 6 plus negative 2 is 4. My final answer would be 6 times 10 to the 4th. Okay. With that, why don't you guys try these next three on your own. You're going to solve them similar to what we just did in the previous three. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay. So here's what you should add for this one. Subtract the exponents. 9 minus 14 is negative 5, so I have p to the negative 5th power. Now don't get hung up on this. This is just saying that p has got to be greater than 0 because if it wasn't, if they didn't say that, then uh, there would be a situation here where we might have an asymptote because you can't divide by 0. Here we have 5 to the negative 4th times 5 to the 8th, so we would add the exponents since the bases are the same. And negative 4 plus 8 is 4, so this would be 5 to the 4th power. And lastly, this would be 4 squared, which would be the same as 16, times 2 to the 10th. And then we're going to have that times 2.5 times 2 to the negative third. Combine like terms, well, 16 times 2 and a half. I like terms in the sense that they uh, don't have any exponents, so we just take 16 times 2 and a half. 16 times 2 and a half is 40. Now 2 to the 10th times 2 to the negative 3rd, they have the same bases, which is 2. So we add the exponents, 10 plus negative 3 is 7. So it would be 40 times 2 to the 7th. Now if you notice, a negative number um, as an exponent does not make the value of an expression negative. All powers of positive numbers are positive. So in other words, if you have 3 to the negative second power, your answer is going to be positive. If you have 1 third to the negative seventh power, your answer is going to be positive. Anytime we have a positive base, your answer is going to be positive. Let's look at one last type of example here. They say to rewrite these as a fraction with the variable c represented only once. In other words, we're going to simplify this. Now, there's a couple ways we could do this. Um, one thing, one way to approach this is just to take the negative exponent, take that part, and make it positive. Well, in order to make that negative exponent positive, we're going to put it in the denominator. So the 2c, that's still in parentheses, of the fourth power is going to stay where it's at. But the 3c, the third power, that's going to move to the denominator, making that 3 a positive exponent. 
So now we can go ahead and simplify this. Well, 2 to the 4th power is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 16. 3 cubed is the same as 3 times 3 times 3, or 27. Now what this is saying is I have 3 C's in the bottom and 4 C's in the top. So that means that I can take 3 C's from the bottom, leaving me with no C's in the denominator. I can cancel that out with 3 of the 4 C's that are on top, so I'm left with just 1 C in the numerator. So my answer is going to be 16 C over 27. Again, what I just did is C cubed is the same as C times C times C. C to the fourth is the same as four C's. So I just realized that if I have three C's in the bottom and four C's from the top, the three on the bottom take out three from the top, leaving me with just one C in the numerator. So I'd have 16 C, like I said, over 27. That can't be reduced, so that would be my final answer. Why don't you guys try the next one on your own? So hit pause and then hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, what we should have done is we should have taken this and moved it to the denominator, make it positive. So it's going to be 2a cubed. Now let's simplify that. 4 to the 4th power is 256. Two cubed is eight. So this becomes 256 a to the fourth over eight a cubed. Again, I have three a's on the bottom, takes out three a's from the top, leaving me with one a on top. But here the 256 over eight, that can be reduced. In fact, eight goes into 256 32 times. My answer would be 32 a. Okay, so those problems can be kind of tricky, but really those are super important to know how to do. How to do these problems when we have uh, exponents and negative exponents, and we have a whole lot of things that are going on here as far as all those different properties that we talked about in the previous lesson. So what we just ended here with example 4a is really important to make sure um, that you understand it. So knowing that, let's do one last example. Let's say if I have a bigger problem. Let's say this is a problem that I had to work with. First off, the 3 twelfths, that part there we're going to leave, and we're just going to look at that and see if we can reduce it. So 3 twelfths, sure enough, that can reduce to uh, 1 fourth. Now the a cubes, so we're going to treat these as separate pieces here. Actually, you know what I like to do is I like to make all my negative exponents positive. So before we start doing some of this stuff, let's go ahead and do that next. And that way we don't get too, much, too far ahead of ourselves. So the a cubed is fine where that is. The b, though, I'm going to move that to the denominator. So if you notice what I just did is I just wrote down all the variables whose exponents are positive. The one that are negative, though, I need to take and move those to a different location to make them positive. So this b to the negative second, I'm going to move that to the bottom. Make that a positive second power. The c to the negative three, I'm going to move that to the top to make that a positive third power. Now I'm going to simplify everything. So again, we already simplified the one fourth. So I really don't need the one in there. But as far as the a cubed is concerned, I have three a's on top this time. That's going to take away three a's from the bottom, leaving me with 4a cubed in the denominator. The b's, those are both already in the denominator, and I have b to the fourth times b squared, which gives me b to the sixth. In the numerator, I have c to the fifth times c cubed, which gives me c to the eighth. So that would be my answer. So this whole mess that we had at the beginning simplifies to be c to the eighth over 4a cubed to b to the sixth. So that's just one more example of something you might see in your assignment. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, but if not, please make sure that you let me know so I can help you out. Otherwise, good luck on your assignment.